We will start the discussion on section 20.10 inverse Fourier transform. Basically, it's trying to get the integral formula similar to inverse Fourier transform to get back the original function once uh, you have the Fourier, uh, Laplace transform. So there's uh, so Laplace transform, like a, let's write it down again. So Laplace transform is integrating zero to infinity e to the minus s t and the for a function f t and dt. So that's the uh, Laplace transform. So what we try to get is try to get a uh, inverse of that. So we'll try to get a f t as a function of uh, so symbolically just write it like uh, given a little f sub f as a function s and try to get back the original function. And because of the similarity to the um, uh, Fourier transform to Laplace transform of this form, then we'll try to uh, do it like a Fourier transform because in Fourier transform, we know how to do inverse Fourier transform. But the uh, first uh, difference between this form and the Fourier transform is that now it, uh, in Laplace transform, we integrate zero to inf infinity instead of uh, negative infinity to infinity as in uh, Fourier transform. So the first thing you want to uh, make it look like a Fourier transform is to integrate that by negative infinity to infinity, but multiply f s with a step function, theta t dt. So this step function is defined as just one for positive t is zero for negative t. So that in that way now we extend the range of integration from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that get one similarity. And then uh, now, then the inverse transform because it, uh, when you have inverse transform, we will use this one instead of the original one. So we can write it explicitly this uh, step function also here would be equals to the inverse Laplace transform. So when you do the inverse Laplace transform, we get ft multiplied by the step function. So it will be zero for negative t explicitly. Okay. Now in that, uh, um, another problem with uh, doing it in Fourier transform is that when we define Laplace transform, we multiply by the e to the minus st. So this, because of this exponential factor, then, uh, then the f can be uh, can goes to large value and goes to infinity at t goes to zero as long as the integral is finite or is is uh, convert, then the Laplace transform can still be defined. So f t itself may not have a, a um, a Fourier transform, okay, so because uh, it may not be small enough when, when t is large. So to fix that, we actually define another function before we do a Fourier transform or inverse Fourier transform. So what we try to do is to define that's uh, define a g t with uh, exponential function beta t f t theta t okay so for a large enough beta okay so this beta is to make sure that uh, this capital g is well behaved when we do a Fourier, Fourier transform on f g okay and the condition for how large the beta is uh, we'll uh, see the uh, more clearly when we get everything done. Okay, so we'll do that. So this 
GT is that. So GT is now is well behaved and we can get the Fourier transform out. So the Fourier transform of capital G is this little g and we'll kind of change the convention. We will not have any parameter when we do the Fourier um, free, free all the coefficient in front, just one. So when we do the inverse Fourier transform, we have one over two pi in the, um, in front. So now it's integrates this GT, capital GT, and E to the minus I, omega T, DT. So that's the definition of uh, Fourier transform now. And now we can uh, just, because uh, GT is given by this, this one. So now we can express this FT, theta T as the inverse, uh, inverse Fourier transform. So now we can write FT, theta T as uh, this FT, theta T is e to the minus e to the beta t times gt is equals to e to the beta t times gt but gt has a can be expressed as a inverse free transform so the free inverse free transform of one over two pi integrate minus infinity to infinity g omega e to the i omega t d omega okay so that uh, that's the uh, just the usual um, in inverse Fourier transform okay now we can combine this exponential function together and write like one over two pi and become e to the beta plus i omega t g omega d beta plus i omega t so basically a beta plus i omega instead of uh, just d omega we change the variable to beta i omega and because of multiplied by i we need to divide by i in here so one over two by i of this one so this new variable, we can now call it uh, the usual one S. So we can define S as beta plus I omega. Now this becomes a, this becomes a, uh, this becomes a path integral. So uh, well, we can write more explicitly, one over two pi I, right? Like uh, if it's in, in terms of beta, then in, ter in terms of S is beta minus I infinity to beta plus I infinity e to the ST G omega DS. Okay, now we can get to this form of the uh, integral to get the original function back, but now this integral involves this G omega instead of the little f S. So we need to find a uh, relationship between uh, g omega and f s so, so that the integral is in terms of little f instead of little g. So let's see if we can uh, we can do that. So if s is equals to beta plus i omega, so uh, so we use this to that. So f uh, s, which is f s equals to f beta plus i omega now equals to e to the minus beta minus i omega or beta plus i omega t and then f t theta t dt okay so now we can uh, use the 
definition, if, if you have E minus beta T times cap the FT theta T, which is here E to the minus beta T, FT theta T, that is just capital G T. Okay, so we substitute that into here. So that equals to just capital G T. The rest of exponential function is E to the minus I omega T dt. Okay, so we got back to here and we see that this is exactly just g, just g omega. Okay, so now this g omega is just f f s with s equals beta plus i omega. So we can write it down now explicitly. The final formula is f t theta t equals to one over two pi i integrate beta minus i omega beta plus i omega i infinity beta plus i infinity and then e to the st and then f s ds and this defined as a path integral okay so we look at this path you look at s space s complex s plane so this in this line integral is a strict line going through beta from negative infinity in the imaginary part uh, to negative infinity to post infinity in the imaginary part. Okay, so uh, now to we can look at this explicitly. Now this is a, a formula for this function f t theta t and theta t meaning that uh, it should be zero for negative t and in order that this integral will give you a zero for uh, for negative t it must means that uh, for negative for negative t because in negative t we can close the loop on the positive s positive will s side because uh, when t is negative this positive s and times the negative t we will, this will be exponentially small so we can close the loop on the right side and but this so that contribution here is zero the straight line is what it, what we have it, in order to for that to be zero that must be analytic so this is analytic Analytic. And this is t less than zero. That's why why better. This must be analytic over here. So beta must be chosen along a path such that on the right side of the S plane this function f s must be analytic. Okay, so to make sure that it's zero, f is zero for negative, um, for negative t, okay. On the other hand, for positive t, you can close the loop. So for t greater than zero, and now there can be uh, singularity or poles are on the left side of the straight line. So then uh, the integral will give you two pi i times the sum of the residue. So um, now you cancel two pi i with the sum of the residue um, for t greater than zero and zero for t less than zero. All right. So this formula will give you the correct one. So this integral will give you the correct ones that uh, this, the left-hand side is explicitly zero for t less than zero and provided that the beta is chosen such that is, it is to the right of all the singularity and uh, to its left, uh, the function, the integram is analytic. Okay, so that is the formula for doing a inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so uh, we'll stop here. Next time we'll uh, do a, a couple examples to illustrate this integral.